So in this short video, I want to explain the most important data format that we use in modern web development, and that is JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it is a format that we use to represent some structured data. So if you've ever called an API, the chances are that you receive the response data in a JSON format. And what is interesting about JSON is that it is derived from JavaScript object notation. So if we take a look at this example, at the top we have a JavaScript object. It is the constant person, and he has a name, age, an is student flag, and a few hobbies in an array. And if we go ahead and strip away the const person from this, what is left is a JavaScript object. And this is also a valid JSON. So that is why we call it JavaScript object notation, um, because it is derived from the object notation in JavaScript. What's also important to know is that JSON has its own file ending, which is .json. So where exactly do we use JSON? We commonly use it with APIs, as I mentioned earlier, but we also often find it in configuration files. And the reason why is because it's super lightweight and it's really easy to read. Now, what types of data does JSON support? It supports strings, it supports numbers, booleans, arrays, and objects. So let me give you a few examples. This file right here where we only wrote hello is actually valid JSON. It would also be valid JSON if we only leave a Boolean. But the thing is, we typically don't use separate files if we only have one piece of data. We usually have something larger, an object, so we usually see something more like this. So over here you can see that we have all the key value pairs enveloped within these curly braces. So we have a valid JSON object over here. You'll also notice that after every key value, we have a comma. And what you'll also notice is that at the very end, so for the last key value within the JSON file, we don't have a trailing comma. So it is important that you only use the comma after key value pairs if there's another one that follows. The next important thing to know is that we can also have an array of JSON objects. So in this third example, we have square brackets and we have two JSON objects which are separated by a comma. The next thing that we're going to learn is how we can use JSON files within the browser, within JavaScript files, and within Python files. So let's start off by looking at how we can use a JSON object within the browser. So over here you can see the skeleton of an empty website. All it has is an h1 tag with a hello, and we have a pair of empty script tags. Now within these script tags, I'm going to create a constant, and we're going to call it data, and we're going to set it equal to this JSON. So I'm simply going to copy it in here and format it once so that it doesn't look that ugly. And the next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and console.log the data.name. And I'm going to save this. And now if I open this within my browser using the live server, you can see that we have hello. And if we inspect this and check out the um, console, you can see that in the console it says John. Now why does it say John? It's because we have this data object and the name is John, and that is exactly what we're console logging. Now we can also go ahead and create a console log for the age by changing this to age. And you can see that the age appears over here. Let me make it a bit bigger. So you can see that we have John and 30. So now I want to show you how we can use JSON within JavaScript files. So on the right hand side, I have a very small script called parse.js. And what we're doing in here is that we're reading from the file example to JSON, which is exactly what I have open on the left hand side over here. 
and then we're parsing it using the JSON parse method. And so we're setting const parson equal to the parse JSON of the file content. So if I go ahead and execute this by writing node parse.js, you can see that it executes the um, script and it gives me the expected output, which is John 30 and false. So it is giving me the output of these three console log statements. So the last thing that I want to show you is how we can use JSON objects within Python. So on the right hand side, all I have is a very small script. And what it does is it simply converts the JSON object into a Python dictionary. And to see that, we can simply print the type of person. So if I go ahead and now execute this, you can see that it returns class dict, which is short for dictionary in the terminal. And that means that our JSON object, which was passed in through the file over here, uh, was simply converted to a Python dictionary. And in order to access the individual bits of data in this um, JSON object, which was converted to a Python dictionary, so we can access it as we would usually access dictionary items like this. So now in this example over here, we are accessing the street within the address. So if I go ahead and execute this again, you can see that it says 123 Main Street in the console output, which is exactly what we have over here. And I can take another example such as the name. And then I can save this and log it to the console again. And you'll see that it only gives us the first name. So I hope that this short video helped you understand JSON a little bit better. If it did, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and we'll see each other in the next video.